Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Keys. Sadly, the Sierra that I was going to go and look at over the weekend did get sold by the time I had a chance to go down there and look at it. Already kind of over the idea of going with the Gen 2, even though the majority of the votes on the Instagram poll were in favor of the Gen 2. But now I'm thinking either Gen 1 Cat Eye or OBS. What do you guys think about this? This just hit my radar. It has 89,000 miles on it. It's in pristine condition and it's 20 minutes away from where I live. Would you guys enjoy seeing an OBS on the channel? Let me know in the comments below. This thing is freaking sweet. And just like that, we have an OBS just chilling. Maybe one day him and I can be friends. Oh, oh, cool, Civic. Right on. Yeah, just, just come on in. It's all good, dude. Today is a good day. Today is a great day because we're finally removing that plastic piece on the bottom portion of the front bumper. That air dam right there is finally gonna go. It's got multiple names. I never really know what to call it. Air dam, air balance, air diffuser in the front. I don't, I'm not too entirely sure what the proper term for this plastic piece is down here, but all I know is this. It serves absolutely no function as far as I'm concerned. After today, she is going to be gone. Also, side note, we're here at the monumental to my childhood place, the bowling alley and boomers. Boomers is like one giant arcade. All of California just shut down again to every non-essential business. Obviously, these two are non-essential, so hopefully they can stay afloat until our governor allows things to open up again. And just like that, time to remove an air dam. Let's get to it. One of my favorite parts about removing the air dams off the front end of these trucks is being able to see more of the front of the tire, especially when you have an aggressive tread pattern like all terrains. It just looks so good when the truck is coming at you from the front end. It just looks so good having more tire that's visible. That itself is a good enough reason to remove this air dam, but also it just gives the entire front end a two to three inch lift look. Gives your truck an instant lift by removing that plastic piece down there. First thing I'm gonna do is measure the distance from the bottom of the air dam to the ground before removing it. I wanna see exactly how much ground clearance I have in the front, even with the three and a half inch lift in 35s. I just don't feel like we have a lot of ground clearance in the front end. So. Let's measure that right now. And then I'm also gonna measure the distance from the lowest point of the front bumper after removal to the ground to see how many gains we gained, how many inches of clearance we gained in the front end. I don't have the proper tools to measure the approach angle, but we can at least see how many inches of clearance we now will have on the front end. All right, so it seems like the lowest part is probably the last three inches of either side on the air dam where it kind of pivots down. So I'm measure from this part right here to the ground and see exactly what we have. We have exactly 13 and a half inches. And then from the center, we have 14 and a half. All right, so let's crawl underneath here and see what we got going on. Okay, so first off, it looks like we have two little plastic clips right here on the front center. That will pop off real quick. And then underneath here, 18 top mounted. I'm gonna have to guess they're probably 10 mil heads. All right, well, it's a bit of an awkward angle, but let's get to it. Third one is not in the most convenient location, because it's right behind that bracket, but I think I've loosened it at least. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I recommend using a shorter socket, but that worked. Three down, on to number four. All you gotta do is break it free, and the rest is like hand loosable. Loosable, yeah, that's a word. So the sixth one's kind of hiding behind this bracket. It's not hard to get to, but it only takes another second to figure out where it's at. There we go, boom. That took 30 seconds. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just break the last few that I can reach here free. Just kind of loosen them up like that, give them like two or three turns. And then just come back and hand loosen them. Yeah, three or four turns actually. Boom. And then, and then just come back and then hand loosen the rest of them. That'll make this a lot faster actually. And uh, if you have a pillow you don't mind sacrificing, bring yourself a pillow because Man, my neck's hurting. Aside from that, this is actually really, really easy. The work lights are giving me a pretty good idea of what it would look like to have some rock lights in the wheel wells. What do you guys think? I think soon to come, but the main reason why I got up was to put a 13 mil socket on my ratchet here because 
there's a 13 mil bolt that's kind of in the way of gaining access to one of the 10 mil heads. So I'll show you guys exactly which one that is. So it's this bolt right there. It's right above the sixth bolt from last. This 13 mil head is in the way. So we're gonna go ahead and lift that off real fast. It's on a little bit tighter than the other guys, but it's still pretty easy. So we do have one more 13 mil that's blocking access to our 10 mil. Third from last, right above the third 10 mil is a 13 mil that needs to come out because the threads in the back are blocking access to the 10 mil head. So, 13 mil, let's go. All right, there it is, our 13 mil, free and clear. Now we have access to the 10 mil. I am using a deep socket. I don't recommend using a deep socket because the angle gets a little weird. It still works, but definitely not ideal. Now I'm gonna fill that 13 mil back in real quick. And just like that, we have all of the bolts removed. Only thing left to do now is remove these two little plastic clips right here and right here. And this whole air dam should be free and clear. Now that we have all the bolts removed, everything should be good to go. I missed a bolt. Ooh, ooh. And just like that. Dang, that is a drastic difference. It looks so much better. So we do have these plastic tabs, one right here in the center and then one on either side that do need to be removed. I ended up sliding the diffuser off and then down and it came right out. But I'll grab a tool to get these popped out as well. Also, there's these plastic pieces right here that are pretty visible. I'll see how I feel about it tomorrow when we have some sunlight, but yes, it is sundown, so I will see you guys tomorrow. That's how you get a Rebel look on a Ram Laramie. How much better does that look now? And see, now you can see more of the front tire and even the lower control arms. That is so cool. I'm getting Ram Rebel vibes right now. Obviously, the Rebels have a completely different front end, a blacked out front bumper and grill. What do you guys think? Should I wrap the front bumper and the grill as well as that centerpiece right there in a brushed aluminum to give it a Rebel look? That'd be kind of sick. One thing I do want to point out is the fact that I also have this electronic air dam back here that automatically lowers itself when the truck reaches 38 miles an hour. Most fifth gen Rams have this unless the truck has air suspension, but my truck doesn't, so I do have this. It needs to come off because now it's deemed completely useless without this air dam connecting to it when that one's lowered. This one serves no function whatsoever. So that's gotta go. Probably do that in a future video, but these also have to come off as well. These are held on by nothing more than one 10 mil bolt and they drop free as you guys can see right there in the photo. Pretty straightforward, but yeah, these gotta go too. One thing I strive for on my YouTube channel is to provide you guys with some level of value, whether it be strictly entertainment or to help bridge that gap between your guys' needs and your solutions. Which is generally why you'll see products linked in the description below on my videos because I wanna help share my experiences with using certain products or materials with you guys at home to help you out on your DIY projects. Even if it's a tool 
that helped me install that product, I'll generally link it in the description below. Companies reach out to me all the time, usually on Instagram DM, to try to get me to showcase their product. Now, if it makes the cut, if it's on my YouTube channel, that means I had a good experience with it, I support it, and I think you guys should get it as well. It's not generally in my nature to go out and badmouth any companies or products for that matter. So if you come to my channel, then you're gonna be seeing products that I support, that I think you guys should go for. Also, that being said, the only thing you're gonna need for today's uninstallation of the air dam is gonna be a simple socket set, which I think everybody should have in the back of their car or their truck that goes up to at least a 13 or a 14 mil and a clip remover to help remove those retainer clips off the air dam as well. I'll have both of those things linked in the description below. Hopefully that helps you guys out if you're doing this installation, this uninstallation yourself. We are weeks away from exactly one year ago. I took the exact same photo of the Silverado in the exact same place as the Ram is sitting right now, right after moving the air dam. Bring more mods to the channel, more cars or more trucks, whatever it may be that you guys would love to see. It's gonna be a good year. Make sure you guys stick around, subscribe. I will catch you guys on the next one. Until then. It is gonna be a good year. Man, if only we knew what 2020 was bringing us. <laughs> but that is all I have for you guys today. As always, hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you guys on the next one. Until then, peace out.